all seen impressive photos of the interior of the famous Super Kamiokande neutrino detector showing workers floating around in boats. But you know that until recently, Super K had never released a photograph of the interior of the detector taken with a smartphone. Why is that? Is there some kind of magnetic or electrical interference inside the detector that makes them not work? No, actually the reason is much simpler than that. It's just that the last time that Super K was open and people were inside was in 2006, and smartphones hadn't been invented yet. However, in 2018, we opened the detector for the first time in 12 years for a major refurbishment. So we had four main tasks during this refurbishment. Number one, we wanted to install new water pipes. Number two, we wanted to clean up the rust and dust that had accumulated over those years. Number three, we needed to replace the few percent of photo detectors that had failed during that period. And most importantly, number four, we wanted to fix a two ton per day leak that had been there since the beginning of Super K in 1996. And we accomplished that by using a special flexible glue over the weld seams and the penetrations of the main tank. So now that this work is completed, it took about 3,000 person days of effort over seven months last year, we are ready for the next phase of Super K's existence. So this is a Kavli IPMU-led initiative, and it involves dissolving about 10 tons of a chemical called gadolinium sulfate in the water. Gadolinium acts kind of like an amplifier for neutrinos, and it will allow us to do much better, much more precise studies of supernova neutrinos, of atmospheric neutrinos, of solar neutrinos, and even allow us to search for proton decay in more detailed ways than we've been able to do before. So we now expect the first gadolinium will go into the detector in early 2020. And after that, new discoveries and new adventures surely await.